الحمد للہ و صلاۃ وسلام علی نبی محمد ولا علی وصحب وسلم اما بر حبت فلّہ A question was asked from what I can determine to be an honest individual who wants clarification for things that I've said and with regards to a couple of individuals, two differing individuals, and why the stances are different, the stances that we take are different with regards to two individuals. And one is Dr. Yasser Qadi, the other one is Dr. Uh, Tahir Wyatt. So the individual said, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, akhi. What are the standards though for deciding who is a scholar? If Yasser Qadi can't be considered a scholar, why Tahir Wyatt? Also, when a student of knowledge refutes others, is that fitna? Do we just ignore the battle in bid'ah? I was of an understanding that for you to be a scholar, there would be a minimum standard in a body that would acknowledge the said individual. Let's say like being a doctor entails nor than just studying medicine, you need to meet a set uh, standard to become a consultant, for instance. I was of the understanding that Thahir Wyatt was refuted on his stance uh, towards the nation of Islam, I believe this is what he means to say. He never refuted them as such and was their guest in one of their radio stations, uh, unless I'm wrong, of course. Right. So, this is a series of questions and in fact involves a, a very large answer, but let's just try to be as brief as possible and give it as much haq as we can to the extent of our limited ability and in accordance with what I said, with what I've said. So that way this individual can be clear about what my position and why. So you mentioned first, what are the standards for deciding who's a scholar? If Yasser Qadi can't be considered a scholar, why Tahir Wyatt? Both Yasser Qadi and Tahir have PhDs. They both have done extensive uh, scholarship, uh, informal, and uh, formal scholarship, meaning scholarship in the Islamic universities. Yasser Qadi also in the uh, in a secular university, I believe Yale. I believe he graduated from Yale, or he graduated from, uh, uh, I forget where, the other school that he may have graduated from. Anyhow, that they both have an extensive record in uh, various forms of scholarship, walillah alhamd. But distinguishing being the two, between the two is absolutely, absolutely essential for the, the following reasons. For one, Ahl Sunnah in general from the Qawaid in Usul of Ahl Sunnah Tiwul Jama'ah is that they love the scholars of Ahl Sunnah Tiwul Jama'ah. Meaning those people who adhere to the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi Wasallam in their actions and statements from what we can determine from the Zahir. And, and bat, batin, but we cannot uh, make a judgment on someone's heart and see what those ibadat aqalbiya. So Ahl Sunnah loves Ahl Sunnah. And Ahl Sunnah in general detest Ahl Bid'ah with, in, in accordance with the extent of their Bid'ah. The reason why I say Yasser Qadi and Tahir Wyatt are not of the same tree so to speak is because Yasser Qadi has many mukhalifat in his usul and he's clearly distanced himself from the da'wah to Ahl Sunnah, da'wah to Salafiyah this is what I'm saying, I'm making the assertion that da'wah to Salafiyah is da'wah to Ahl Sunnah like our Sheikh Imam Mukbil bin Hadi al-Wad'i said da'wah to Ahl Sunnah, da'wah to nila kitab Allah min kitab Allah wa ila sunnati Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam min sunnati Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the da'wah of Ahl Sunnah the Salafi Da'wah, the Salafi Minhaj, is the Da'wah from the Book of Allah to the Book of Allah and from the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah to the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, meaning we call to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala alone. Now, 
there are so many issues we can talk about, but let's try to do our best to stick with this question. But what we find from Dr. Qadi, and there is so much work out there, but let's, let's suffice ourselves with the limited amount of work of his that I've come across. And that would suffice us to be his, his uh, article in Muslim Matters uh, entitled Salafi Islam or On Salafi Islam. And in it, and also in some of his videos, little bits and pieces that I've caught, and I haven't spent time going through his things, nor will I, nor do I think it's beneficial to do so, but what I've heard is suffi suffices me. And what has been extensively reported upon him from his own speech and been refuted by many students of knowledge, yakfina, and brought to ulama is sufficient. But some of the things, some of the mukhalifat of why we don't consider Yasser Qadi to be from Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah, why that makes a difference between him and Dr. Uh, Tahir, and why I would say Dr. Tahir is someone to go back to and has a level of scholarship that amongst his people we would refer to him as a scholar and why you might not do that with Dr. Qadi not because he doesn't have knowledge Dr. Qadi is very knowledgeable however Dr. Qadi is from what we can see it seems like he's consumed uh, by uh, whatever the causes for his various forms of deviance in deviating from some of the usul of Ahl Sunnah, and from it, from amongst that usul, is the way in which he speaks about the scholars and belittles the scholars. Yes, he belittles the scholars. No matter how much he says, uh, and let's just take one quote. Let's see, so that we don't waste a lot of time. Here's what his, uh, Dr. Qadi said about Salafi scholars. Now, I don't care what you say. There's no way you can turn this and twist this and say that. Uh, that this shows any kind of um, respect for the scholars, especially Salafi scholars. Here's what he said. Islam is witnessing unprecedented ideological attacks from radical secularism. These attacks seek to render Islam in particular and relig religiosity in uh, general anathema to modern society. New atheism and, uh, and scientism are increasingly in vogue amongst public intellectuals. Modern culture reeks of materialism, hedonism, pornography, and sexual exploitation. Uh, extreme ideologies, including radical feminism, abound. Quite frankly, rare is it to find a Salafi scholar. He didn't say just a Salafi from the layperson. He said, rare is it to find a Salafi scholar. Those are the scholars he studied with in Medina. Who is even qualified... Which, let's go back a bit. Uh, rare is it to find a Salafi scholar? This is not cut and paste from Dr. Qadi, but I'm going to emphasize this point. Let's go for a third time because the Prophet the third thing, uh, third time, rare is it to find a Salafi scholar? who is even qualified to discuss these issues. SubhanAllah. Is that not a great slap in the, the face of those very ulama that he studied with and those uh, other than them from Ahlul Sunnati with Jama'a? Rare is it, uh, let's give him the full bit of the bit of doubt and finish the quote. Rare is it to find a Salafi scholar who is even qualified to discuss these issues, much less refute them. So the Salafi scholars are in on inept and they're unable to really deal with contemporary issues this is the same thing the people of Bid'ah and the Hizbiyah have been saying for a long time from amongst the Arabs we have uh, Abdul Khalik, uh, Abdurrahman Abdul Khalik who said that the Salafi scholars basically are the scholars of Hayt wa Nifas you know we have all uh, meaning that they are the scholars of Tahara and and uh, and women's uh, menses that that's all they know they don't know the fickle walk. They don't know the reality of what the world, what what's taking place on the world. This is a a major insult. That means that these scholars are, in fact, not. They're inept and they're not qualified to speak. But yet Qadi is Dr. Qadi, and yet whoever he, I don't even know who he takes as scholars. But this is shameful. Taib. 
Quite frankly, where is it to find a Salafi scholar who is even qualified to discuss these issues, much less refute them? And when one does not find such a scholar, it is not because of his Salafi training, but in spite of such training that he is able to take on such challenges. So he's just basically slapping. And then we it's well known some of his other statements, and we're not going to spend a lot of time on that, but I just want to stick with the the uh, person's, uh, what they, they are asking about. Stay. So this is one of the things with Dr. Qadi, which is pretty major. And he, this whole article, he distanced himself from Salafi Dawah, just saying it's another man-made Dawah, like the other Dawahs, Jamaat Tabliq, Jamaat Takfir, Wahid, Jamaat Tadis, the Sufis and stuff like this. And he says at the end he would rather sit with an open-minded or a, uh, th this is paraphrasing now, uh, 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 you know, uh, Ashari, then he would, then with a hardcore Salafi, as he calls it, right? Your second part of your point, so this is why we distinguish between Dr. Tahir and Dr. Qadi. Also, when a student of knowledge refutes others, is that fitna? Do we just ignore the battle in, in Bid'ah? No. For one, it's not fitna if it is a, uh, if it is a necessity to refute. Because this is from the Qawaid of Ahl Sunnah. This is what the, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, this is from the Tarbi of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa that he, uh, ref he commanded the good and forbid the evil. As we know that that's uh, a principle of the deen. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, The Prophet Sallallahu said, if you are, uh, if one of you sees uh, something sinful, then uh, change it with his hands. If he's unable to do so, then change it with his tongue. If he's unable to do so, then change it with his heart. And that's the weakest form of Iman, meaning that commanding the good and forbidding the evil is from Iman, it's from faith. And refuting Ahl Bidah is from Iman as well, because that means someone is Tajawas going either against the deen or distorting the deen, and it requires uh, to clarify the haq and refute the battle. So I think that answers the second part of what you said. Do we just ignore the battle in Bid'ah? Absolutely not. We don't. However, Ahlul Sunnah, from, from the books, uh, from looking at the books of the Salaf, uh, all the way up until contemporary times, the Salaf meaning, the Salaf Asaleh, and then we're talking about the uh, those who follow the, the, their Medhab, meaning Ahlul Sunnah with Jama'ah, and in contemporary times people refer to themselves uh, those people uh, who describe themselves and practice and follow the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from Ahl Sunnah refer to themselves not necessarily they all refer to themselves but are Salafi right. so when someone from Ahl Sunnah makes a mistake as the ulama have clarified for us that there is a distinction and this has this this yastinadilla dalil we we go back to dalil but these are major messiah we're not going to spend hours on this but however so there's a different way of dealing with someone from ahl sunnah and someone from ahl bidah why because ahl bidah their usul their assas their foundation is built upon uh some mukhalifat for example if we say that uh, an ashari or a sufi that for example a sufi who uh believes that it's okay to supplicate to the dead. No matter what argument he says, whether he supplicates directly or he says it's the essence of the soul that he's supplicating to, or he's using them as a medium, he's making shafa with them, istighatha, whatever the case may be, there that is something from usul, that's from the usul of tawheed, that they are violating according to Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. According to them and their scholars, no. However, Ahl Sunnah would deal with a person like that because of his foundation principles is not built upon Salafiyah, not built upon Kitab Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam what? The understanding of the Salaf Salih, then they would deal with them not in the same manner as they would deal with someone from Ahl Sunnah whose usul, their foundation is intact, but they may have made a mistake in a, a mas'ala, something much less than that obviously, in some issue or an issue of ijtihad that they disagree of, or whatever the case may be. 
and uh, ikhtilaf, differences, they have, there are two types, ikhtilaf tanur or ikhtilaf tabad. Ikhtilaf tanur, meaning there's gradations in, 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 in uh, the difference. Ikhtilaf tabad means that there's a clear, for example, the Ashari creed as far as sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the creed of Ahl sunnah. That's ikhtilaf tabad because the Ashari's in general uh, affirm seven sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? That's a big difference. Ahl Sunnah affirms everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala affirms about himself in the book of Allah and everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala negates about himself in the book of Allah. And everything that the Prophet sallallahu affirms about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the authentic Sunnah, we affirm. And everything that the Prophet alayhi negates from the authentic Sunnah, we negate. So there's a big difference in the usul, in the foundation of how we understand the text and how we look at sifat. So that's a difference in usul. But if you have two individuals with the same usul, and even if one has made a, mis a big mistake, uh, from the scholars especially, you maintain their honor. So you, you give them da'wah, but you still refute their mistake. So what do we gain from this in accordance with your question? We gain that, one, everyone makes mistakes, and we deal with mistakes in different manners depending on the level of the mistake, and the individual that made the mistake and uh, and that everyone can be refuted. Looking at the Nasus, looking from the Hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu The Prophet Sallallahu said, all the children of Adam make mistakes or commit sins and the best of those who sin are the those who repent. Imam Malik Rahimullah Ta'ala said, Imam Adar Hijjah, he said, and I'm going to paraphrase. He said, "Kulu yusibu yukhti illa sahib, illa sahiba hadha qabr." Imam Malik said, "Everyone gets things correct and makes mistakes. Meaning, no scholar is masoo. We don't blind follow anyone because even Imam Malik, even Imam Shafi'i, and before them Imam Abu Hanifa, and after them Imam Ahmed, make mistakes." And better than them with the Sahaba to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam radiallahu ta'ala majma'een who made mistakes in ijtihad. Issues of ijtihad where they differed, where it wasn't always a correct ijtihad. Right. And we know this from the text the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Kulubna Adam Khatba. Every all the children of Adam make mistakes, But the best of those is those who repent. Right. So being refuted does not negate someone's status. That's number one. Because when we talk about refutations, we can talk about refutations that are knowledge-based. We can talk about refutations that are desire-based, based upon jealousy and hoa. And, and so you, you have to deal with the two different types of refutations. Along with that, not just that refutations differ, but sometimes someone can refute someone and they're the ones who's mistaken. So because someone, everyone, you will not find a name probably of someone who hasn't been refuted. The great imams refuted one another. So what about less than them? So being refuted doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean anything unless we're talking about someone has been totally refuted, meaning their whole foundation of what they stand on upon Islam, their usul, not that they messed up. Uh, made a mistake in an issue or a mas'ala so now we write them off because there would be no one to follow there would be no one to study from there would be no no such thing as knowledge why because the prophet said all the children of adam commit mistakes make mistakes and the best of those who sin are those who repent and there's also so many different kawaii and principles and even dr qadi uh acknowledges this in his in his his uh, his work where he's more or less clarifying or refuting or uh, the Salafi Dawah on Salafi Islam. And he acknowledges this and he knows this because he studied those things. In fact, I bought his master's thesis when I didn't even know who he was many, many years ago in Medina. And it was about Ahl Bidah, meaning he was going into depth about, I think it was Jehem, Jehem ibn Safwan, one of the ru'us of bid'ah, meaning Yasser Qadi went in depth in refuting and clear and, and going into the history and going into details about this individual. 
from Ahlul Bid'ah. Tayyip. And I know this took very long. As far as uh, scholarship, that's something uh, you can go to, and I'm sure there's many people who talk about the criteria for being a scholar. And also, that's not other etalak that you need someone to say that you're a scholar or a board or a panel. No, that's not that's not necessarily the case. However, often, and in the history of Islam, people were, it was witnessed that they were great scholars and great imams, but they didn't have to have this, uh, everyone doesn't have to have a, a tezkiah to say because it, it just doesn't, it's not practical. For example, someone who lives in a far off locality or what have you in some place and they're teaching and they learned and so, do they need a tezkiah from someone in such and such land to say that they're a scholar or do they teach? and teach what they know and what they benefit and benefit the people and perhaps amongst those people amongst that level they're a scholar like that's something totally different a door we don't really want to open like the last part important part of what you said i was under the understanding that tahir wyatt was refuted on his stance in the nation of islam uh i was aware of some of the things that the people were saying about him some of his enemies more or less uh trying to claim his going to give dawah that he should have clarified Tawheed better or he should have said this better, he should have said this and, and that and the other. Uh, as far as saying something is a mistake and that's a, something he's going to get a sin from or that's bid'ah, no. Uh, could he have done it better? I'm sure if you ask him, he probably would say, oh yeah, I could have said this or he may be suffice of what he said. The point is, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam said, and he said this to Ali ibn Abi Talib عنه, during jihad. And he said, at the end of the hadith, he said, لِيَنْ يَهْدِيَ اللَّهُ بِكَ رَجْلٍ وَاحِدٍ خَيْرًا لَكُمْ رَحَمْرًا That if, you, uh, if one person is guided by your hand to Allah, then it's better for you than the red camels. Meaning, that going and giving da'wah as the Prophet Muhammad Salawatu Rabbi wa salamu alayhi did and the, the NBA, they give da'wah to their people and they gave da'wah to disbelievers, mushriks and people of the various faiths that's what you're supposed to do that's what Islam is that's what da'wah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is calling everyone even Ahlul Bid'ah we want guidance for Ahlul Bid'ah we want guidance for ourselves we want guidance for Ahlul Bid'ah we want guidance for Ahlul Kufr the people of disbelief so to fault him for going to Ahla Kufr and knowing from what I know of him that clearly he makes takfir of them, there's no ashka there, wala qalil, then this is something that stands upon battle. So this, this is, I hope this uh, is something that clarifies things. It may open a whole door, door, door of questions and I really don't care to entertain these type of things unless I feel uh, it's necessary and I do prefer to do things verbally on video as you see because I don't I'm too lazy to type and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil